शुरू कर दीजिए गुड मॉर्निंग लर्नर इन टूडेज ऑनलाइन सेशन ऑफ एम बी ए प्रोग्राम फॉर दर्स एम एम पी सी ट्वेल्व दैट इज ऑन स्ट्रेटेजिक मैनेजमेंट I am Dr. Vijay Vatariya, going to let you learn different concepts of strategic management. But before proceeding for today's session, let me just give a very brief recall of our earlier session of strategic management, where we try to learn basics and the fundamentals pertaining to the strategy. What was the concept of strategy? different de definitions pertaining to strategy 
then we also discuss the concept of strategic management how the strategic management is relevant at different levels of the organization that is corporate level strategic business level and functional level further we also learn the features the nature and the characteristic of the strategy and in today's context to what extent the strategy is so relevant then we also refer the strategic process in detail and further we were discussing about the environment related aspect or important factors which are referred in terms of analyzing a specific type of strategy or formalizing a specific type of strategy so in today's session we will be talking about that module that is module number 2 which is environment analysis which is having three units unit number 4 is about external environment analysis where it will help in understanding the environmental that is particularly the external uh, factors in detail and which also include the pastor analysis where we will be referring to individual factor in detail and different type of provisions applicable which the corporate the firm need to refer while referring to the external environment the unit number 5 of block 2 will be on competitive analysis which is covering the rivals position how to analyze different tools and in this particular case one important model is discussed that is michael porter's five forces model which is particularly helpful in terms of analyzing the competitive environment and there are certain layers which one need to understand which will be referred in this particular unit as well the last unit of this module is about the internal environmental analysis where the sort analysis is very important where the strength weaknesses opportunities and threats pertaining to a specific organization need to be analyzed while defining a specific strategy for the organization so let's begin with this unit uh, which is external environment analysis the coverage of this unit would be the importance of environmental analysis broad dimensions in a general environment relationship between the general environment and the strategy concept of industrial organization model that is io model then the pastel framework for analysis will also be covered under this unit then the, the kind of implication of each factor of the pastel framework that is political economic social cultural technological legal and ecological factors we will be trying to have a kind of implication of these factors on the corporates last of this unit would be external factor evolution that is efe matrix so let's start the discussion on the environment analysis so why a specific environment is referred by a strategist by the corporate houses that is the question so uh, just to understand it we need to we need to have a look on a uh, different corporate perspective of different uh, micro and macro environment related elements that they consider which may include a uh, different type of economic situation or economic possibilities in a specific country if they are into Uh, inclination or uh, they are having or exploring prospect for the international global market so in that case the global economy also need to be understood apart from that the possibility of the political stability in respective uh, country is also very uh, particularly considered in this case so in this case the first level of the uh, external analysis is towards the understanding of the macro environment 
which consider uh, broadly speaking a different type of organizational strategies for the purpose of success or failure these macro environment related uh, factors need to be analyzed or need to be understand first apart from that external environment which is considered to be dynamic and not static change very frequently and therefore it gives a kind of opportunities as well as threats to the organization therefore this external environment pose both type of options opportunities as well as threats apart from that uh, it also helps in terms of assessing the external environment and therefore the environmental scanning is uh, a kind of term given to external environment analysis sometimes we also call it the industry analysis which is basically referring to three different processes and the first one is basically the environmental scanning process the second is assimilation and third is evolution so we will be referring each of these steps in detail so the first step in the analyzing external environment is the environmental scanning in this particular case some elements or some factors particularly in the case of say pastoral trends or pastoral analysis are considered and they are collected the information pertaining to these factors are gathered which is political economical social cultural technological legal and say ecological so first of all these information pertain to a specific country or in case if the global presence or the global business perspective model is also need to be explored so from that perspective the global scenario need to be understood in the same scenario in, in this same model apart from that there are certain bases of the sources which can be referred as a base of information which can be internet it can be magazine it can be journals it can be research papers it can be newspapers and many many more the second step is uh, within the process of analyzing external environment is assimilation in that particular case once the pastoral related factors are gathered based on that information one need to have a detailed assessment on the opportunities and threats available with the organization in the present context considering the data available through the pastoral related factors subsequently in the stage uh, step 3 that is the evolution process uh, this data is further analyzed in terms of understanding the impact of those factors on the organization for which the data has been collected uh, apart from that the moment we refer the kind of uh, environmental scanning we also need to uh, understand the different techniques different methods which are applicable so in the case of environmental scanning it is normally accomplished by systematically monitoring and studying current events constructing scenarios and employing the delphi method or sometimes delphi technique we also call it it's a technique for finding consensus among a group of knowledgeable experts so we will be seeing some of those methods and tools to scan the environmental related factors which are going to impact the organization so uh, one such aspect is the constructing scenarios so here the constructing scenarios involves a detailed and reasonable view of how the business environment of an organization might develop in the future based on the groupings of key environmental influences and drivers of change about which there is a high level of uncertainty within the industry or within the structure of the organization uh, if we try to refer the business environment or the environmental analysis perspective then broadly speaking business environment is categorized or classified into two broad categories one is the internal environment and another is external environment 
where the external environment is further classified or divided into two parts one micro environment and macro environment if we refer the internal environment then it is something which the organization can directly refer the organization is somewhere can monitor can analyze from its own resources from its own ways like the value system mission and objective of the organization organizational structure corporate culture quality of human resources which is there with the organization and the scope of making improvisation is something part of the internal environment apart from that labor unions within the organization within the industry apart from that physical resources and technological capabilities of the organization are also come under the internal environment related factors but if we try to refer the external environment it is having some micro environment related factors as well as macro environment related factors within micro environment the organization the customer in the open domain the position of competitors the market position nature of market or maybe the suppliers their tendency their uh, stand and their negotiation position need to be understood first and different type of intermediaries which take part in the process of execution of business activities also need to be considered under the micro environment but if we refer subsequent a broader perspective of the external environment then we need to refer the macro environment too which include uh, economy as a whole political and legal position where different type of laws and regulatory provisions need to be considered then the technological changes taking place in an open domain at a broader level also need to be considered here the global changes or global business scenarios taking place or change, changes taking place also need to be considered under the head of macro environment then socio cultural position and the demographic position also need to be considered while referring to the business environment from the perspective of macro environment now we need to have a detailed discussion on some of the models tools available in terms of external environment analysis perspective so one such tool or the model is industrial organization model or sometimes we call it as io model it's a forms um, the basis of which is to understand the concept of a strategy leading to competitive advantage apart from that it adopts an external perspective on strategic decision making here it is assumes that the features and conditions of the external environment impact the formulation and implementation of the strategies in order to generate above average returns and thereby gain competitive advantage so we need to think from this io model perspective where on an average return is not sufficient we need to think beyond it and from from this perspective the competitive advantage or the rivals position is also need to be considered under this model too if we refer this model in terms of the processes involved under this model then it it pros it involves a kind of uh, you know process for achieving competitive advantage here it is start with external environment based on which the industry selection is referred where based on this industry selection one can have an idea of the opportunities and threats available in respective industrial zone apart from that once you are zero down about a specific industry then further one need to define or formulate the strategy pertaining to that industry after that the resource mobilization resource development need to be taken care and based on that a specific strategy based on different strategy available so defined need to be selected and need to be implemented and that is the position where 
the organization can identify about their strength and weaknesses, which is somewhere going to dominate, somewhere going to be addressed. And based on that, the competitive advantage of respective firm, maybe the rival's position can be better cleared. And based on that, the uh, competitive advantage can be achieved by the respective organization. So in this particular case, this IO model process examine the external environment, which includes general, industrial, and competitive environment to identify the external environment attributes and both decide the limit, the organization strategy solutions. Based on the structural parameters of the strategy of the industry or uh, industries is to be chosen with the high potential of returns. So in this particular case, based on the strategy formulation and before that the industry selection and subsequently the strategy implementation process helps in terms of giving a competitive edge or competitive advantage to, to the respective organization in the respective group of uh, industrial uh, environment. If we further refer this IO model process, then it's a strategies associated with above average return should be developed based on the features of the industry in which the organization plans to operate. It also acquired to develop the key resources required for successful implementation of the formulated strategies and plans. Here, the competitive advantage will be achieved in case if an organization successfully implements the strategic actions which enable an organization to utilize its resources for meeting the demands of external business environment. Now, we need to have a detailed discussion on the pastoral framework because this gives an idea of the external environment or the external environment factors or the forces which are in detail analyzed before framing a specific policy or the strategic policy of the organization. So it is having broad categories as we have already discussed them. So just to give a recall, uh, it covers political, economic, social, cultural, technological, legal, and ecological. So in case there is a change in these external fact forces, it is going to affect directly or indirectly in terms of changes in the consumer demand for both industrial and consumer products and the services which are applicable in such business environment. Therefore, these external forces affect the types of products being produced by the organization. It can also change the positioning in terms of the nature of positioning. So the organization need to again refer the positioning strategy. Uh, sometimes we call it repositioning. Apart from that, market segmentation strategies need to be referred again from this particular change point of view. The types of services offered and the choice of business again need to be uh, referred or revisit considering these type of changes. Based on this pastel framework coverage or pastel factors analysis, we can say that pastel framework used to understand the most important factors at the present time and it should be primarily used to look into the future impact, which may be different from their present or past impact. It is also crucial for organization to identify and evaluate external opportunities and threats. So as to develop a clear mission, design strategies to achieve long-term objectives and develop policies to achieve short-term goals too.
now we need to understand each factor of the pestle framework so first we will be referring the political factors within the pestle framework it covers for example it covers government stability it can be government stability of the central government state level government local government and say foreign government in case there is some implication or some linkages of the organization with the global presence in that particular case the stability is somewhere whether it is the stand alone uh, stability is there is it some sort of coalition based government is there so in case some disturbance is there some uh, stability is not there in a specific uh, government formation or maybe sustainability of the respective government in a specific state or the central level then it is going to harm or it is going to be unstable situation for the respective organization which is operating in respective state or in respective country at the same time in case if there is some scenario of internal dispute within a specific government then it can also refer to kind of this disturbance or a kind of uh, uh, disability situation apart from that political values and belief can also be referred in terms of shaping the policies where the proactiveness of the uh, or, or of the government or maybe of the political parties who are into the uh, opposition or maybe into the power can be referred apart from that the ideology of respective political party need to be analyzed to or need to be covered under this head apart from that different type of regulations pertaining to trade and global businesses what is the idea behind it whether it is something liberal that is open ended means highly liberal regime is there apart from that whether it is in contrary is it something very rigid means close ended no flexibility and highly restrictive in nature so that scenario need to be understood from the political factor point of view in the pastoral framework apart from that taxation policies of the government is it something a kind of flexible in nature or is it something a kind of burden on the taxpayers or the corporate houses apart from that the priorities in social sector maybe is it in terms of the inclusiveness or is it something unattentive in nature so as an example we can take the case of direct beneficiary transfer that is dbt if we refer the economic factors in the pastoral framework then we can have some such cases which are considered from the perspective of the economic analysis or economic factors under the pastoral framework say national income of the country which includes gnp trends maybe personal disposable income maybe personal consumption in respective country which helps the organization in terms of understanding the trend the position where they are going to operate or where they are make, going to make a specific strategic decision so these are some of those basis factor apart from that the interest rate position uh, the saving rate position the corporate savings position also helps in terms of defining a specific strategy from the perspective of the pestle framework analysis then the money supply balance of payment inflation rate unemployment position disposable income we have already referred in terms of the personal the business cycle and trade deficit or its its counter that is trade surplus position can be referred under this economic factors head the third aspect is socio cultural factor in pastoral framework which is something from the uh, from the country specific perspective or the social perspective or social uh, aspects in a specific country need to be understood first which include population demographies say ethnic composition what is the composition of ethnicity in that country aging of population younger generation older generation the youth or the children age group so what is the composition need to be understood here uh, regional changes in population growth and decline apart from that 
social mobility, lifestyle changes, how quickly that is being adopted or change taking place are referred here in the case of sociocultural factors. Then attitudes to work and pleasure come under this head. Then the level of education which spread or erosion of educational standards are also considered very prominent factor under the sociocultural factor of pastoral framework analysis. Then the health and fitness awareness among the population of respective country where the organization would like to operate are also part of this analysis. Then multiple income families are again considered a prominent aspect. If we refer the fourth aspect of pastoral framework that is technological factors, then there, there are coverage of very good amount of technological factors which are considered very significantly while referring to the environment analysis and based on that a specific strategy selection, formulation and then selection and implementation take place which may include biotechnology position in respective country, process innovation. We have some good examples one can refer as the introduction of the fast tag on the toll plazas, online single window system for getting the clearances or uh, approvals for initiating any type of process or maybe any type of um, you know organization setup, something like that. Digital revolution, very recently we have seen the cases of UPI and e-wallet. Apart from that, government spending on research and development are again part of the technological factors. So how proactive the respective government is towards developing the research and uh, technological you know, infrastructure is something going to substantiate a very positive environment of business in respective country. Then government and industry focus on technological effort. Case of a disease locker where it is helping out both the government as well as the, the customers or the population base. New discoveries or development, maybe in terms of the artificial intelligence, maybe robotics technology, maybe cloud computing or the blockchain technology, which are somewhere uh, you know, developing this technological base in terms of giving good opportunities and making system more simplified and very useful in the present context. Then the speed of technology transfer and rate of obsolences are also considered in the case of technological factors within the pastoral framework. If we refer another factor that is legal factor, this is something facilitative as well as restrictive in nature. So one, need to understand the framework of pastel from the perspective of the legal factors. So like there are some cases of say monopolies, legislative uh, position, antitrust regulation. So one good example is Competition Act 2002. Uh, it has been introduced just to, uh, just with an intention to curb the rise of concentration of wealth in few hands and of monopolistic practices. So from that perspective, this legal factor is very important. What is the scenario? What is the position of the antitrust regulation or the monopolies legislation in a specific country? Apart from that, employment law, uh, which may uh, address the minimum wages norm, maybe the working conditions environment. So from that perspective, the environment the employment laws need to be considered. Apart from that, health and safety norms, which is guided in India, which is guided by different type of laws. For example, Factories Act 1948, Mines Act 1952, Dock Workers, that is Safety, Health and Welfare Act 1986, Building and Other Construction Workers Act 1996, Child and Adolescent Labor, Prohibition and Regulation Act 1986 and Contract Labor Regulation and Abolition Act 1970 are just few examples before us which helps and guides in terms of the position of health and safety norms in the, uh, in the market. 
Apart from that, product safety regulation. So we can have a good example of FSS AI, that is Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, who laid down different type of standards for the producers of eatable goods and other beverages. Apart from that, uh, different type of policies from the legal perspective related to quota restrictions, uh, import duties, forex regulations, FDI framework and regulations, controls on distribution and pricing of commodities are also part of the consideration from the perspective of legal factors in the pistol framework analysis. Apart from that, the last aspect of consideration in pastoral analysis is ecological factors. In this case, different uh, environment related or ecological related factors are considered. For example, carbon em emission position in a specific country, the permit labels, and beyond that, if, if the emission is taking place, then in that case, the corrective measure need to be referred. The process involved in a specific corporate in terms of production, in terms of facilitating that service, need to ensure that carbon emission should be under a specific permitted limits. Then pollution levels, then environmental sustainability related aspect, global warming related uh, position. So one need to address all these ecological factors if um, are applicable in a specific country or in a global uh, scenario perspective or maybe the biodegradable uh, material. So these aspects come under the ecological factors. Based on this, we can have another set of uh, metrics analysis, which is external factor evolution. Sometimes we call it EF. E matrix. Uh, this is a kind of tool which helps strategists to summarize and evaluate the pastel factors. Usually there are around five steps. We need to understand each of these. In the first step, the strategist need to list out the key external factors based on the pastel uh, framework analysis where the strategists need to categorize them in opportunities or threads for the firm. So opportunities based factors will be categorized differently and, and threads based factors will be categorized separately for the firm. In the step two, the strategist will assign some weight to each factor between a range of zero to one, where zero is something not so important and one or towards one is very important factor. Subsequently, the sum of all weights should be one. It is industry based. Since it's an industry based, so we will be assigning a maximum one as a total uh, weight of, of that opportunities and threats. After that, in step three, we need to assign a rating to each factor. So the the rating is uh, given in between one to four where where the rating scale is something one which is minimal means poor response two average response three above average response and four is superior response once the rating has been assigned now one need to define the strategist need to define the weighted score which is the multiplication of weight we have given in step two and the rating that has been given in step three. So once it is multiplied, now based on that, we can determine the total weighted score of the organization. As an example, we can refer a, a example quoted over here where around five such opportunities have been identified from the external factors maybe say global market untapped by alcohol free beverages. So it's a case of some beverage industry based uh, product. Uh, second opportunity has been identified as increased demand by ban on use of alcoholic beverages like that. So five opportunities have been identified and same time at the same time, five threats has been identified. So initially 
opportunities and threats have been given a weight between 0 to 1 and the total of all the opportunities and threats weight is 1. It cannot be more than 1 and it cannot be less than 0. Subsequently, the rating has been given to each such external factor between 1 to 4. So opportunities as well as threat, individual opportunities and threats factor has been assigned a rating between 1 to 4. In the fourth step, a weighted score has been calculated by multiplying the weight and the rating. And the total has been generated for this particular case where the total is 2.10. So based on this analysis pertaining to a specific uh, industry or organization, one can easily analyze that this external factor evolution matrix helps or concludes that despite number of opportunities or threats in an EFE matrix, the maximum possible weighted score for an organization is 4 and the minimum possible score is 1, which is a poor position. So if an organization gets a weighted score of 4, then the response of the organization to the opportunities and threats is excellent. And in case if it is one, then that is a worse situation for the organization. Now we can refer another unit that is competitive analysis, which is having some good concepts to cover under this unit, like the competitive forces, what exactly these competitive forces mean for the learner, concept of competitive analysis. Michael Porter's five forces framework will also be discussed here. Role of strategic groups in competitive analysis. Analyze the social media competitive analysis and competitive profile matrix, CPM. So we just begin with the quote of Bill Gates to understand the competitiveness or competitive forces. So Bill Gates has said, whether it's Google or Apple or free software, we have got some fantastic competitors and it keeps us on our toes. So in this quotation, Bill Gates has identified the position of competitors and therefore we cannot escape the position of competitors and just to focus on, on our own things. So we have to have a balanced approach we need to do our work as an organization, but at the same time, we also have to have a close watch what our competitors are doing in the market. Therefore, these competitive forces are the factors and variables that threaten a company's profitability and prevent its growth. Now, for a success business mantra point of view, the competitive environment need to understand, which means any organization can only be successful if it has the ability to formulate an effective strategy. At the same time, this can be done by collecting all the relevant information about competitors and evaluate them to formulate their own strategy. It means that Whatever strategies are being formed by the corporate are stand alone not sufficient. In that case, the rivals or the competitors position also need to be think of, also need to be analyzed of just to conclude or just to initiate a specific type of strategy for the organization. Now there are key forces which are very important for a competitive analysis. Some of them are here, put it for you, like strength of the competitors, weaknesses of the competitors, all these need to be uh, zoned down, all these need to be pinpointed and therefore it can help you out in terms of defining your own better strategy. Apart from that, the other forces are objectives and strategies of the competitor, response of the competitors towards Pestle factors, vulnerability of the competitors to alternate strategies of other organization, vulnerability of the organizations to their 
alternative strategies, positioning of the products or services relative to major competitors. Apart from that, the status of entry and exit of new and old business organizations respectively are also considered important forces for the competitive analysis and the key factors resulting in the present competitive position in the industry, trends taking place of the sales and profit ranking of major competitors in the industry, suppliers and distributors relationship in the industry and last but not the least threats to the competitors due to the substitute products and services are again considered as important forces. Based on this competitive uh, forces, we need to understand the five major forces identified and analyzed by Michael Porter. And therefore this model has been given name as Michael Porter's five forces analysis. In that particular case, it's a kind of proper evolution of a competitor's strategy that helps the organization in establishing the USP, that is unique service proposition, or sometimes unique selling proposition of its products or say services. Porter's five forces model of competitive analysis is one of the most widely used approaches to develop strategies well-known tool for analyzing the competitive environment. So this tool helps in explaining how forces in the competitive environment shape strategies and affect performance. So those five competitive forces are the rivals position, potential entrants, sometimes we call them as the startup, sometimes we call as the new ventures. The third is the substitute product, the product you are developing and the substitute to that. Um, as an example, we can consider that some electronic publishing, which is very commonly visible these days as a direct substitute to the printed textbooks. Apart from that, the fourth uh, competitive force is the negotiation skills or the bargaining power of the suppliers and the fifth is the bargaining power of the buyers that is the customer so we will be referring a detailed aspect of all these five forces so first we can refer the rivalry among existing competitors which covers or which addresses number of things like number of competitors to your organizations, diversity of those competitors, whether they are into a specific product line segment or is it something that almost majority of product line segments are being covered by those rivals. Apart from that, industry concentration or the position of industry concentration then industry growth or the rate of industry in respective segment need to be understand. Quality differences between different rivals is a major parameter of consultation here. Brand loyalty of customers towards those products of yours as well as brand liability loyalty of the other, that is rivals uh, products also need to be consulted. Barriers to exit and switching cost, which is very commonly seen in almost all uh, five such uh, forces uh, is considered. Apart from that, we also need to refer the, the new entrants, that is the threats from the new entrants. Uh, very recently, we have seen the scenario, even during the COVID time or previous to the COVID time, the government has initiated or encouraged the startups or the one who are having good ideas or innovative thoughts have been facilitated by the government. So in that case, the existing organizations need to think them as new entrants and they may pose some sort of threats to the existing organizations. 
so from that point of view it is another important force of analysis the competitive analysis point of view so it include barriers to entry position economies of scale to those new entrants the brand loyalty loyalty of those new entrants or the kind of product maybe goods or service they are developing or offering so brand loyalty towards that capital requirement cumulative experience government policies in terms of facilitating or encouraging these new entrants also need to be understood access to distribution channel how conveniently how feasibly the distribution channel available to new entrants give a idea to the existing organization whether there will be a competitive edge or it's a kind of challenging situation to the new entrants and of course switching cost is very prominent uh, even in the case of new entrants need to be considered third aspect is bargaining power of the buyers so buyers are basically the customers so what is their competitive position in terms of the market maybe uh, the base of the customers maybe in terms of the number to what is the uh, number of those customers is, is it large or very limited number of customers are there in market so so that give a kind of pose that give a kind of you know good position to the bargaining to those buyers apart from that size of each customer order is it in bulk is it in uh, limited number of uh, quantity differences between competitors price sensitivity buyers ability to substitute buyers information availability and switching cost of the respective buyer are some common uh, components which are considered from the perspective of the bargaining or negotiation power of the buyer if we refer it from the perspective of the bargaining power of the supplier that is just opposite from where the goods or the raw material are procured by the organization so they have again a good uh, bargaining power so that need to be understand from the porter's five forces analysis point of view which include number of the suppliers and the size of the suppliers uniqueness of each supplier's product that give a kind of potential to their product and a kind of promise that that particular raw material is having a very prominent position apart from that focal companies ability to substitute is also considered under this head apart from that the position of substitute product is also considered as a threat so what is the availability of substitute product the quality of that substitute product the pricing of that substitute product are some of the variables which are considered considered under it so we can have the buyer's prosperity to substitute uh, relative price performance of substitute perceived level of product differentiation a number of substitute products available and the product switching cost is also considered as one of the important forces in the porter's five forces analysis now if we need to summarize this uh, analysis then it's a powerful competitive strategy employed by one rival that can greatly intensify the competitive pressure on other rivals the frequency and rigor with which rivals use any or all competitive weapons at their disposal can be a major determinant of whether the competitive pressures associated with rivalry are cut short fierce strong moderate or weak we further need to refer strategic groups it's a kind of conceptual clusters in the sense that they are grouped together for purpose of improving analysis and understanding competition within their industry as an example we can take four wheeler automobile industry which is grouped 
or the kind of strategic groups can be formed based on the thought of say cars, multi-utility vehicles and say sports utility vehicles, SUV and MUV. There are certain other criteria based on which the strategic groups can be formed in an industry like geographic distribution, breadth of markets, products or service quality, which may be few others to determine strategic groups from the perspective of the analysis. We also have the competitive intelligence. Here, the information which is relevant in the strategy formulation regarding the environmental context within which a business organization competes. So there are some such intelligence which has some uses from the perspective of the competitive intelligence. So we need to have a look on those as well. Say by providing description of the competitive environment that inform strategist and guide strategy formulation. Challenge common assumption about the competitive environment. Forecasting future development in the competitive environment. Identifying and compensating for exposed competitive weaknesses. Determining when a strategy is no longer viable or sustainable. Indicating when and how a strategy should be adjusted to changing competitive environment. Apart from that, we also have the concept of scenario planning, which helps decision maker to identify ranges of potential outcomes or say scenarios and impacts, evaluate responses and manage for both positive and negative possibilities by visualizing potential risk and opportunities businesses can become proactive versus simply reactive to events as an example of scenario planning we have considered two such aspects that is a kind of relation between talent availability and competitor growth so from that perspective there are four such scenarios considered here. So in scenario one, that is a sustained competitive scenario has been identified, which means that talent availability is surplus. And at the same time, the competitor growth is also better. That is the booming situation. So in this scenario or scenario one, there is a strong growth of competitor and the abundant talent is also available. But if we refer scenario two, which is in the case of talent availability point of view, the scenario two has been defined as excessive supply. How we are saying that the talent is in surplus, but at the same time, the competitor growth is flagged, means the growth is not that high. It is weak growth. Therefore, we can interpret it that scenario two is having weak growth of competitor, but the talent is in surplus. If we refer to scenario three, which is battle for talents, in that case, the talent is scared in, in terms of the shortage. And therefore, and at the same time, the competitor growth is booming. So in this scenario, the strong growth of competitor, but the talent is scared. And the last scenario is about downshifting economy, where the talent availability is again short, means scare, and at the same time, the competitor growth is again very weak. So in this case, we can interpret the scenario four as the weak growth of competitor as well as the scare talent. Now, we also need to refer the external environment perspective from the or the competitive analysis perspective from the social media availability. So here, the social media competitive analysis is one way to stay ahead of the competitors and 
God knew opportunities and potential threats. In this case, social media competitive analysis helps in identifying competitors on social media, knowing exactly the social platforms and the competitors, what they are using, knowing the ways they are using these platforms and also understanding the response towards the social strategy of the competitors. Benchmarking the social results against the competition, identifying social threats and finding gaps of one's own social media strategy. There are four steps which are used in social media competitors analysis, which are determine the competitors, information gathering, SWOT analysis, up-to-date information. We also have one another important tool that we'll be covering in today's discussion itself, that is competitive profile metrics, CPM tool. This tool is used to compare the organization with its competitors. It tries to highlight the strong and weak points of the organization related to its competitors. It involves four major steps. So in the first step, is to identify critical success factors or CSF. In the second step, assign a weight to each critical success factors from say zero to one, where zero stands for the least important and one stands for the highly important factor. This indicates the degree of importance to a particular factor. Further in step three, we assign the rating to each organization from the competitor point of view, which range from one to four or where one stand for major weaknesses and two stand for minor weaknesses, three with minor strength and four with major strength. So once these rating has been assigned, to respective organization. Now, in the last or the fourth step, we assign a score to each organization, which is a multiplication of the weight assigned and the rating assigned. And based on that, we can have a example where critical success factor have been identified for three different competitors and a weight has been identified for a specific critical success factors and the rating has been identified for respective competitor based on the competitor's position. And based on that, if we multiply the weight with the rating of respective competitor, then we can calculate the score of the respective competitor. And if we club the score of each of these three competitors, then we find that in, in this example, the competitor one is having a score of 2.41. The competitor two is having a score of 2.89 and the competitor three is having a score of 2.66. So in this scenario, if we try to conclude this example in terms of the analysis, then competitor two is having the highest score that is 2.89. This means that the competitor two is stronger than its rivals in the industry, that is competitor one and competitor three. And just to give a brief of uh, what the critical success factors uh, we have been identified here is about different aspects which are uh, from the perspective of the competitor profile metrics referred. It can be sales per employee, it can be IT facilities, it can be credibility aspect, it can be online advertising aspect, maybe supply chain related thing, maybe cost structure. So depending on a specific competitive environment or the industry specific thing, some critical success factor need to be identified first, need to assign a weight to it. And the total of all those factors in terms of the weight 
कैन नॉट बी मोर देन वन एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट वी कैन गिव द रेटिंग टू ईच ऑफ दिस क्रिटिकल सक्सेस फैक्टर फॉर रेस्पेक्टिव कंपिटिटर एंड वी कैन जनरेट द स्कोर द टोटल ऑफ द स्कोर इफ कंपेयर बिटवीन डिफरेंट ट्राइवल्स और दम्पिटिटर्स द हाइस्ट स्कोर इज द वन हु इज हैविंग ए गुड पोटेंशियल्स now uh, we are uh, reached to the end of block 2 and where we are able to cover two units so this unit 6 will be covering in the next session so till that uh, just say goodbye to all of you i hope you you must have uh, learned a lot from today's discussion and uh, from this perspective we will be learning some new aspects of the environment analysis in upcoming online session we will be discussing about the internal environment and block 3 thank you